Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net. In the previous module, we created a new account and created a default subscription, which in turn created a directory, an Azure Active Directory. So what I want to do in this module is talk about what a directory is and why you need it. So you can think of an Azure Active Directory directory. I think I'm just going to call it directory from now on as a directory service in the cloud. Uh, there's also a premium version, which we'll talk about much later in uh, one of the other courses uh, in the series of courses here. Uh, and it will allow you to link your on-premise Active Directory with your Azure Active Directory. Again, later. So I'm a programmer. I'm not a network guy. So I definitely need to clarify what exactly does a directory service do. So from a very generic standpoint, any directive, uh, directory service will keep track of an organization's users and an organization's resources. So at a minimum, a directory service can be used to authenticate users in a system, making sure they are who they say they are, and then authorize users to access various resources, whether that resource is a shared network drive, a printer, or uh, an intranet website. From a more specific standpoint, Azure Active Directory is no different really in what it does. It's only different in so much that uh, this directory service sits outside of an organization's network and it can provide authentication and authorization services that also sit outside an organization's network. So I created an analogy in the previous module. An Azure account is like a building in a downtown office park. A subscription is like a given floor of the building dedicated to a particular department. It's where users go to do their work. Directories are like security badges. Users can only access certain floors according to the role that they have inside of the company. So if I'm a marketing guy, I can only access the third floor uh, where the marketing team does its work. So given that analogy, there are three reasons why you might add users to a directory. First of all, you might want to give other users in your organization privileges to perform basic directory administration tasks like creating and deleting users, resetting passwords, granting or revoking privileges uh, to services and so on. And so just to be clear here, uh, there are directory administrator roles and subscription administrator roles. At the moment, we're talking about managing uh, directory roles. I'll devote a whole module to each of these two types a little bit later. But continuing on, the other two reasons why you might want to add users to a directory is that you might want to allow a user to access a third party service uh, at using single sign on. So uh, for example, the company might have uh, an account with Office 365, an account with MailChimp to do marketing email blasts. And so uh, it can be set up where the user only has to remember one set of credentials in order to log into both. The third reason why you might want to uh, add users to a Azure Active Directory directory is that you might want to allow uh, a user to access a custom application that was developed by in-house developers. So developers can leverage APIs to authenticate against Azure Active Directory directories. And now uh, uh, they, don't, they don't have to custom build all of that authorization and authentication functionality. The user gets the benefit that they can use the single sign-on functionality. They'll have to remember one set of criteria or uh, credentials in order to log into not only Office 365 and MailChimp and any other third-party services, but now also they can use it to log into their internal intranet application or some external application intended for internal use. So again, this is something that's covered in topics related to the Microsoft Azure Active Directory Access Control Service. Uh, it was formerly known as just the Access Control Service, uh, but uh, we'll talk about that in a much, uh, much further down the road from here, okay? So uh, the directory is primarily for authenticating a user, you are who you say you are, and authorizing a user. You can do what you want to do. And I used the term single sign-on a few moments ago. Uh, just to make sure we're clear on this, the user will get credentials to log in to uh, Office 365 and MailChimp and maybe some other application that was built in-house. Uh, it'll be the same set of credentials, the same username and password to get in and log into each of those. 
the user has to only remember a single set of uh, credentials to access everything. Uh, there's no more need to keep a little uh, post-it note like I do with passwords on it uh, taped on your computer. Okay, so let's talk about how a directory is associated with a subscription. It's not always clear what the relationship is between those two, and let's clarify that. So an Azure subscription trusts only one directory. In other words, an Azure subscription will rely on only one directory for all of its authentication and authorization needs. Now, each department within an organization could have their own Azure Active Directory directory uh, with just the users for that given department. Or all of the departments could kind of be combined into just a single Active Directory, Azure Active Directory directory. It would contain all the users of the organization and uh, it could be managed that way. So let's just keep this straight. A subscription trusts only one directory. One directory could be trusted by many different subscriptions. Furthermore, a given organization could cancel all of their Azure subscriptions. They could cancel Office 365. They could cancel their MailChimp account. Uh, and the directory would still exist. So directories are not tied to a specific subscription or service. So for the sake of better understanding the autonomous nature of directories, suppose that a company wanted for some reason to delete a directory. They had multiple directories, one for each uh, um, a department within their company. Uh, a directory can be deleted. Uh, maybe their department is going to be reorged for some or merged with another department. Uh, a directory can be deleted, but there's a bunch of rules around when that's allowed and who is allowed to do it. Now, I'm not going to go into it right now, but you can find that information at this URL on screen. Uh, and I think the significance of this is that there are lots of rules around um, uh, permissions and roles. And so it's it's important that you have an understanding when you start delegating responsibilities to multiple individuals within the organization that uh, they're not all going to have the ability to do everything in in Microsoft Azure with all the services and all the combinations of, of granting rights and administration and things of that nature to other users. So if you can't do something you think you need to do, you probably just don't, you're not in the right role. So let's recap. We covered several key important ideas in this module. First of all, each subscription will only trust a single directory, an Azure Active Directory, for authentication and authorization to access uh, the subscription services. A single directory could be trusted by potentially multiple subscriptions within the organization. So directories live outside of subscriptions. Deleting a subscription doesn't delete a directory. Directories contain users and maintain their security credentials as well as their roles and permissions as to what they can access and what they can't access. Uh, directory administrators can create or delete users, they can reset passwords, they can provide privileges and services and so on. And directories allow users to utilize a single set of credentials when logging into Azure or some third-party service or Office 365 or some homegrown application. This is called single sign-on. And then finally, developers can add single sign-on functionality that utilizes Azure Active Directory to control access to in-house custom-built applications using Microsoft Azure Directory Access Control Service, which we'll feature in a module a little bit later. All right? All right, so let's move on. Thank you.